Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HZ. This is video seven, and today we're talking about the envelope module. So let's right-click, go to init preset. So for completeness sake, we have attack, decay, sustain, and release. So attack is the time it takes for the signal to reach its maximum amplitude once the note is pressed. Then we have decay, and this is the time it takes for the signal to reach the sustain level after the attack phase. Then we have sustain, and this is the level at which the signal is sustained at while a key is being pressed while we're holding down some notes, right? Then we have release here at the very end, and this is the time it takes for the signal to fade to silence once the key is released. So pretty basic, but I thought we should just cover that here. So the next thing we should really look at is these sections up here. So by default, it's gonna come on 8SX right over here. And if we click this here, we have a list of a couple different things to choose from. So this 8SX is an exponential knob curve at eight seconds. So basically, if we have this attack here at the center position here at 50, something like that, it's going to take one second for the attack to reach its maximum amplitude once we hit a note. So if we took down our sustain, took down our decay, and then really just had the attack and a little bit of a release there, it's going to take one second to reach its maximum amplitude, and then it's going to fade away. And like I said, th these knobs are exponential, so it's not necessarily one-to-one, -one, so the higher you go, the curve is going to be exponential. And it's about eight seconds at the very top. And the next one we have here is going to be 16 SX. And it's basically the same thing as the eight one. It's just 16, which means that a 50 right here at the uh, at noon, it's going to be about two seconds until the uh, signal reaches the maximum amplitude. Okay, next up we have 10S, so it's 10 seconds. So the difference with this one is that it is 10 seconds, so that timing is a little bit different, but the knob is going to be linear, meaning if we have our attack at 10, that's gonna be one second. If we have our attack at 20, that's gonna be two seconds. And then 30, as you guessed it, is gonna be three seconds. Something like, there we go. and so on and so forth. So this is a good way to dial in a very specific time if you want to do something like that. I do prefer this 10S over, I think, the other ones. But uh, yeah, moving on from there, we have one over four, one over one, and four over one. So these are basically going to be tempo synced with a linear curve. So the same thing as we had with 10S where these knobs are linear, that's going to be the same thing with these one over four. So you can sync the envelopes to your BPM, which is kind of cool. So right now I have my tempo at 120, so if I made it really, really fast, something like 200, then really made it slow. So that way I can sync the envelopes to the tempo, which is a very cool uh, concept there. So next up here, let's go back to 10S here, and let's take a look at these V-slope, linear, and quadric. So by default, it's going to come at V-slope right over here, and this is kind of the, the exponential curves or linear curves for our envelope sound itself. Not the knobs that we just talked about, but the curve actually of the envelope. So like I said, by default, let's go to an init preset here. So by default, it's going to be 8SX and then V-slope. So the interesting thing with V-slope here, so this is gonna be exponential and linear depending on where this slider is going to be located at. So all the way to the left, it's gonna be concave, all the way to the right, it's gonna be convex, and then in the center, it's going to be linear. So if we had an attack, something like this, to add some release. We change it over here, and then over here. So you notice here on the far left, it's pretty quick. And then all the way on the right, it starts in slow and then it ramps up pretty quick towards the end there. And then this one is the opposite where it kind of starts, starts kind of fast and then it kind of eases into it. And then here we can kind of go for in between values, right? In the center, we can go linear and so on and so forth. The next one we have is going to be linear. So basically all of these curves are going to be linear. And maybe that's something that you want. And then last but not least, we have the quadric. So this is my personal favorite because the attack is convex and the decay and release are concave. So a little bit more natural sounding, I would think. So 
So in a lot of cases for these settings here, I kind of like going the uh, 10S, so the knobs are going to be linear, so I know exactly what is what, right? And then the actual curves here for the quadric, like I said, it's gonna be attack, is gonna be convex, and the decay and release concave. So we can know it since it's on these settings here, we know that the release is going to be about a little over four seconds, so 4.4 seconds. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense for now. So let's go back to an init preset here and let's change it to the ones that I just had. Now that's kind of <laughs> going right back to where we started. But anyway, so we have this knob over here on the left next to attack. Now it kind of looks like the regular modulators that we're gonna see everywhere else on the synth, but it's actually not, it's a little bit different. So if we click this here, we have either none when it comes by default, init or delay. So what's kind of cool is this init here is basically a pre-attack. So as we know, once we hit a note, the attack phase starts from zero to our maximum amplitude right so we can increase our attack something like this let's bring our release down a little bit so we're already starting or we're always starting from zero from our attack phase so this is kind of cool because we can change the value that's not zero so as soon as we hit a note we're starting kind of like around here ish or so and then it goes into the attack phase so it's a pre-attack level. So we're, we're starting with a certain level and then the attack phase happens right after that. And then next up we have a delay, which is basically going to delay the envelope for however long we like according to this knob here. So we're holding down a note and then it comes here. So if we have it pretty quick down here, it's like it's off and then we increase the slide just a little bit. So I'll press a note, three, two, one, note pressed. And then it happens and then increase it here, three, two, one, note pressed. This might take a little bit of time, it's still getting pressed, and then there it goes. So basically a delay before the envelope starts. And we're hitting another note as well, and there it goes. Okay, so let's go back to an init preset. So that's pretty pretty simplistic now, but it's kind of cool to know uh, to know what it does here. Next up we have velocity over here. So basically this is for dynamic envelopes, right? So it's gonna be scaling the envelope lengths depending on the velocity of the notes that we pressed. So what's kind of cool about this here, if we see this little triangle and we click this here, we have more control over specific ones, for example. So let's say, let's go to 10S and let's go to Quadric, something like this. And let's have our release kind of, I guess kind of long. Okay, so let's go to velocity scale here. So let's turn this quite a bit to the right here. And let's go to our, some of our notes here. So if we had two of those, something like that. Okay, so basically we're enabling this velocity scale and this is gonna be dependent on the velocity here. So for the first note, let's drag this pretty low and then the next one pretty high and let's see what that sounds like. Let's turn our click off here. So hopefully you notice what happened there. So for this first one here, if we have this velocity pretty low down something like this over here, the note pretty much has finished its release phase almost until the second one comes in. But once we hit the second one, it's a lot longer. So basically this knob here is, ta is talking to the release right above it and it's saying, Depending on the velocity that we're hitting the key at, it's going to scale this knob over here. And we can do a positive or negative, and that goes for all of these knobs as well. So if we, if we really just want to have the velocity ch change the attack, we can do that with this knob over here and scale it accordingly to our velocity. So very cool. So below this is gonna be the same concept, but for the keys, right? So if we had our release as it was before, maybe a little bit lower, something like 12. Right, and now we have our key scale all the way to the top here. Those low notes, the, the release phase is gonna be much quicker. Then we, we hit a high note. It's gonna be much longer. So basically the concept is, is we're basically scaling the release phase in this situation right here, depending on the key that we're going to be pressing.
So basically, if you're saying like, I want a higher tone to have a longer release, then we're going to turn this to the right. If you want, for example, the lower tones or the lower notes to have a longer release and the higher ones to be shorter, then you turn it to the left here and then increase the uh, release to taste right over there. So that's basically how those work in a nutshell. And then the velocity is going to basically be for the dynamic envelopes altogether. Okay, so I believe that covers the envelope here. We're going to be talking about this F slash R knob in the next video because there's it, there's a little bit more than uh, meets the eye for this one. It can get a little bit complicated, so I think a dedicated video for just this knob is uh, is worth to do. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.